Hi everyone, and welcome back to Think Science. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you can be notified of more content. In our last video, we discussed meiosis and genetic variation. Today, we will be moving into molecular biology with an overview of DNA structure. Let's get started. First, the question of the day. Name one difference between DNA and between RNA. Leave your answers in the comments below. Now, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. From the name, we can see that it is a type of biological macromolecule in the nucleic acid class. DNA is composed of three things, phosphate groups, deoxyribose sugars, and nitrogenous bases. DNA is made up of nucleotides that contain these three components. A nucleotide contains one phosphate group and one deoxyribose sugar, which are then attached to one nitrogenous base. This base can be either adenine, guanine, thymine, or cytosine. These bases are sorted into purines and pyrimidines. The purines are adenine and guanine, which have two fused rings. The pyrimidines are thymine and cytosine, which consist of one carbon ring in their structures. These DNA nucleotides then form long DNA strands once they have joined together through their phosphate and sugar groups. Two DNA strands together form the characteristic DNA double helix that you may have seen before. But how do these two DNA strands connect with one another? The two DNA strands are connected through the nitrogenous bases that are each part of each nucleotide. One nitrogenous base from one strand will attach to the nitrogenous base from the other strand via hydrogen bonds that will be formed between the two. However, there are specific base pairings. Adenine can only pair with thymine. Cytosine can only pair with guanine. The reason for this is that a purine must pair with a pyrimidine. This is because a purine and a pyrimidine make a three-ringed gap between the strands between the two of them. If there were two purines attached, this would make a four-ring gap. If there were two pyrimidines, this would make a two-ring gap. In order to keep the width of the DNA double helix constant, it is therefore follows that a purine should always attach with the pyrimidine. One very important thing to know about the structure of DNA is that it is anti-parallel. To understand what this means, let's first look at one strand of DNA. If you look at the ends of the strand of the DNA, you will notice that at one end, the DNA ends in a 5 carbon. On the other, the DNA strands end in a 3 carbon. Now, if you look at the complementary strand of the DNA, you will notice that where the first strand had a 5 carbon at its end, the second complementary strand has a 3 carbon at that same end. On the other end, where the first DNA strand had a 3 carbon, the second strand has a 5 carbon on that same end. This is what is meant by anti-parallel. The two strands run in opposite directions from each other. From this structure of DNA, biologists quickly realized that this was a perfect template for DNA replication. DNA replication follows a semi-conservative model, which means that when a new DNA double helix forms out of replication, that double helix is made of one old template strand and a newly synthesized DNA strand. Next video, we will talk about DNA replication, now that we have learned about the basics of DNA structure. We hope you enjoyed this video and leave any questions in the comments below. For more content, don't forget to subscribe. As always, thank you for watching Think Science.